the AI revolution is in full force. And, you know, over the last year, we've seen an explosion of new technologies hit the scene from artificial intelligence language models like ChatGPT, all the way to artificial intelligence image generators like Stable Diffusion and DALI. Now, this new technology is undeniably impressive, but it's got a lot of people scared, like with AI anxiety saying, hey, is my job going to get completely replaced or is the nature of my job going to change entirely? And so I want to make this video today as a software engineer myself, you know, with 10 years of experience and a blockchain developer who's been in this space since 2017. I've seen a lot of new emerging technology hit the scene and the consequences that happen afterward. And so I want to weigh in on all of this and tell you exactly what you need to know. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to become a blockchain master, step-by-step start to finish, break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can share how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about the dark truth of the future of AI. So first, I'm going to start off with the bad news, but then I'm going to talk about the good news because there's both. So first of all, the bad news is AI is going to replace some people's jobs. And if you're watching this video, it's probably going to change the nature of your job in the near future. Now, that's the bad news, but here's the good news. Your job is not necessarily completely at risk, and a lot of the new technology that's hit the scene could actually make your job more enjoyable. And really, a lot of the AI anxiety that I see floating around online, particularly in the tech space, is just a little overblown. So let me explain why. So really, my biggest criticisms with the AI technology as it stands today is that, you know, in the hands of a capable person, it can definitely make them much more powerful and much more effective, but it's not really going to make a dumb person smart, you know, no offense. And so with this in mind, you know, you really have two possibilities on the table. Number one, you know, you could take somebody who's just really smart and use AI technology to create something that would normally take, you know, five, 10, maybe even hundreds of people to create and therefore replace all the jobs required to do that. Or you could get a bunch of people who have no idea what they're doing and they just start using AI to create stuff, and then you'd like no longer need software engineers or technical people. And so those are the two possibilities that I see on the table for just like completely replacing coding jobs. And I don't think that that's really going to happen anytime soon with the current state of the technology. And I'm going to give you several different reasons as to why I think that. So example number one is that artificial intelligence technology makes mistakes all the time, okay? Particularly with language models like ChatGPT. So again, ChatGPT is super impressive, not trying to deny that at all. You know, I did a video recently talking about how you can create an app from scratch in like 20 minutes of ChatGPT. You can definitely do stuff like that. But along the way, it still makes errors, okay? It's a language model. It doesn't actually run the code that it spits out. It has no real way to check whether or not it's making any mistakes. And so for that reason, you really need another human developer who can read the code that it outputs to see if there's any errors, all right? So... You know, you might be able to multiply the effectiveness of this developer, but you still have to have a developer in the equation to make sure that it's right, that it can compile, it can deploy, and that it can do what it ultimately needs to do. And I've seen lots of cases where people try to use AI technology to create a new application, maybe in a programming language they don't understand, or in some new domain that they don't have any mastery over, or even just create a new feature with AI where they're a little fuzzy on how it works. And it actually ends up taking longer with the AI than if they had never used it in the first place. So sometimes it can be a completely net negative, which really results in no efficiency boost. And on the other hand, it still has to be a developer present to make sure that it's giving you the right answers. All right. So example number two really builds off the first example of the AI making errors. Well, it, it can make small coding errors, but it can also just completely mislead you and send you off in the wrong direction. So have you ever, you know, tried to learn something new or ask for advice in an area where you don't completely have any expertise? Well, basically, in a situation like that, someone who's just a little bit smarter than you can give you like a plausible solution. And you say, oh, that sounds like a great idea. I never thought of that. And then you go try it. And then you realize that you're just, you know, you're even more confused. You're creating more problems. and You're completely hitting a dead end. And it was way worse than if you'd never asked the person in the first place. Well, that exact same thing can happen with artificial intelligence, okay? So I've actually seen this with my students who I'm training to become blockchain developers. They're like trying to figure out how to do this new thing. They're like, oh, I'll just ask ChatGPT. Oh, how do I do this? And then ChatGPT gives them this long convoluted explanation and say, hey, try this. And they go do it and they end up more confused than when they started. And so in the same way, if you're trying to use an AI to create something that you don't know how to do yourself, 
it's not really going to replace having a coder who already possesses the information on how to do that to solve the problem for you. All right, so example number three comes from my own experience using AI to build real world applications, okay? And really, what I'm going to say here is that AI is pretty much only good for building small monolithic applications that have a very finite set of requirements, okay? So again, earlier I was talking about how I got uh, a chat GPT to create an app for me in 20 minutes and how you can do the same. It's really impressive, but the capability really ends at creating small, you know, finite applications. Let's say you wanted to have AI create a website for you or a small like blockchain application, like an NFT or a token, and then put it out there. Okay, it's, it's good for that. But what happens when you start like going out and building much bigger real world software that has all these complex requirements with a bunch of different code bases that all talk to one another? Like if you're a software engineer already working in the professional world, you've probably seen this type of stuff, uh, maybe in, in systems that require, you know, dozens of developers to all talk to one another to make things work. Well, an AI is going to have to be trained on all this context, okay? And as I see the technology right now, it's really hard to train that stuff for it to be up to date. And you're going back to the other problems that I mentioned a minute ago, which is it can still make small errors that's going to require humans to fix. And it might even get that context and not have the full context and lead you in the completely wrong direction with how to maintain and extend these really big, complex software systems. And it's definitely not going to create them from scratch. And so bottom line is you still need humans to work on these massively complex real world software systems. All right. So the last major example that I want to talk about right now is security vulnerabilities. Now, this is really an issue that you know is, is present in all software development, no matter what. Uh, field dream, whether it's web development, mobile development, blockchain development. Okay, security is always a risk, whether you're talking about user data in a web 2.0 context, or even more important, you know, financial value on chain with blockchain. So let's say that you could basically get an artificial intelligence to create you a smart contract that's going to, you know, store tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, or even billions of dollars on a blockchain itself. Well, do you really want to fully trust the AI that it wrote the code right, where there's going to be no security vulnerabilities, okay? Most likely, you're also going to want humans to read through every single thing that that thing put out there uh, before you start custodying any real user funds on chain. So similarly, let's just say that a human wrote all the code. Are you going to trust an AI just to go through it and make sure that it doesn't have any type of security vulnerabilities? Well, most likely, you're still going to have other trained humans go through that uh, before you put it out there in the wild and then risk all this money potentially being lost and your project, your business, your DAO, whatever, just completely tanking because it missed an error that you tried to pinch some pennies on and didn't hire real world auditors to look at. So this is another case where ultimately you want trained human eyes in the very least, in addition to the AI looking at stuff and therefore you know, it's not completely eliminating humans from the equation here. All right, so that's an overview of my biggest reasons as to why I don't think AI is going to completely replace software developers, really train technical people anytime soon. So what do I think is good for and what do I think is actually most likely going to happen like right now and in the coming, you know, several years? Well, number one is you can use AI, like I was saying, to create small, useful applications. And of course, this might eliminate the need for the bottom 10% of developers out there. We've seen this type of thing happen before with websites, okay? It used to be really hard to code out websites from scratch, but then you have, you know, uh, a drag and drop website builders that automated away a lot of that process. But guess what? You know, web developers didn't completely go away. We have, we have front end web developers all the time for more bespoke custom application and interface development. But no way is it a wide scale replacement of all software developers. So one thing is most likely to happen. Well, number one, um, it's going to be powerful leverage for competent developers to get more done faster. Okay. So if you know what you're doing, you can use AI tools to accomplish things you don't presently know how to do and also just help speed up your workflow in environments where you do know what you're doing, but you want an AI assistant to take care of a lot of those types of things. But it's going to make an effective person more effective. It's not going to make a dumb person smart. And number two, I think it's going to happen is it's going to cut the learning curve for lots of people who are trying to learn new technology and become coders. So I put a video a while back talking about how you can sort of learn coding on 2x speed with AI. You can use it to cut the learning curve and, and grasp new technology much faster than you could without these types of resources. Also, provided that you're doing that with other resources, you're not relying on AI alone, because like I was saying before, it can make mistakes and can completely send you off in the wrong direction. It's not like having a calculator where you can just plug in the formula and it's going to give you the right answer every time. You need to learn how to code yourself and then use this as a tool, just like a professional developer would. And so that's what I think is going to be the current outcome of all this, okay? And one thing to keep in mind is that everybody's missing most people don't understand basic economics when it terms to capitalism. And one final thing to keep in mind here 
And this is one thing a lot of people just completely overlook when they have this AI anxiety is that when you make developers more effective, like that's just how capitalism works. It's not zero sum. You can actually grow the pie and make our economy you know, much more productive. And when the economy becomes much more productive, it can actually create more jobs for coders to fill those things and not just replace coders entirely. But most people sadly don't understand basic economics and they completely overlook that fact when they get this AI anxiety. All right, so that's an overview of what, where I see the current state of AI and what I think is going to happen with developer jobs, you know, right now in the coming future. Again, if you're a competent developer, I don't think the job's going anywhere anytime soon. The AI tools can actually make your job more enjoyable because you can get more done in less time. And so I take this time to embrace the change, learn how this stuff works, incorporate it in your workflow, and get two steps ahead of everybody else who's just kind of sitting back and letting all this stuff happen. That's definitely a way to secure your job in the future. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps this video out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, and you want to jump in and go for the throat, well, I can show you how to become a blockchain developer step-by-step start to finish, break inside the industry, increase your salary well past 100K over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You know, you really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I found people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Adaptiversity.